Hi class, welcome back. I'm Matt Fisher, your accounting professor. In today's video, we're going to go over constraints. We're gonna do a very simple example to explain how this works. So on the board, you can see that I have jackets that I sell and shirts that I sell. And I have down here, the sales price for jackets is $35, for the shirts it's 25. And I also have my variable cost, 20 and $15 respectively. So now I can subtract my variable cost and get my contribution margin. So my jackets have a contribution margin of 15 and my shirts have a contribution margin of 10. Now, normally we wanna sell the product that has the highest contribution margin. You know, if there are no constraints, if there are no problems, you know, if we can sell, you know, as many of either of these as we want, then, you know, we'd want to sell the jackets first because they have the higher contribution margin. Now, let's introduce constraint. A constraint is when something restricts the amount of product you can manufacture or sell. So let's think about that. We're manufacturing jackets and shirts. So think about it. We have a machine that produces, let's say, both of these items. Well, the machine can only produce so much. So there's our constraint. We have a constraint by the number of hours this machine can work. So now we want to convert this contribution margin to the constraint. The constraint says that we can produce 20 jackets per hour or 35 shirts per hour. So this is our constraint. So in an hour, we can produce 20 jackets. So those 20 jackets times $15 per jacket gets us a contribution margin per the constraint of $300. Then we're gonna do the same thing over here. Each shirt has $10 of contribution margin and in an hour, I can produce 35. So in an hour, my shirts actually generate a higher contribution margin. So previously we said, well, we wanna produce jackets. But then when we're looking at the constraint, which is machine hours, we look at how many of each we can produce per machine hour, per the constraint, whatever that constraint might be. And then we get these numbers that help us determine what we would do. So if we can sell unlimited shirts, then we would produce shirts and not jackets because the shirts are actually generating a higher contribution margin per the constraint because we can only manufacture so many. So these are actually more profitable. All right. Now, if the problem gave you, you know, the number of hours or how much you could sell of this, and then you have some left over time, then what you would do is you would then produce the jackets. All right. So that's common sense. You just got to read the problem carefully and really think about what you're doing here. All right. And apply that information to the situation, the scenario that's taking place here. All right, class, this is constraints. Hope this helped you out. Hope to see you back again soon.